to have you join us in the world of sport. Well, I am Adeni Ajishafe. We just have to look at the activities in the world of sport. Uh, federal government hosted the Golden Eaglets just yesterday at the uh, VIP lounge of MQ Abiola Stadium where they hosted the triumphant uh, team. The Golden Eaglets winning the Wafu B under 17 over there in Cape Coast. Ghana. It was a warm, uh, welcome, a very warm, uh, welcoming party for those boys because of what they did in Ghana. For the fact that they were able to win four out of four games that they played, they did well against Ghana, four two. They also defeated Togo, not forgetting Cote d'Ivoire, and also they did well against Burkina Faso. They called their young etalons. It was a fantastic game, fantastic game for the entire squad of Golden Eagles, and they were able to win that game two one. Tough one, but they triumphed and qualified for the African Championship that will be coming up in Algeria later. Well, the fact is, uh, Nduka Ogbade has been able to change things for that particular squad despite the short time they had together to camp and they were able to actually win that particular competition. Congrats to Golden Eagles, congrats to Nigeria, and for the technical team, they've done a wonderful job and hopefully they will build on it to see how they can better the love for Nigeria in the African champion that will be coming up uh, in Algeria. Now joining me to talk sport is Taufik Lawa. Good to have you, Taufik. Good morning, sport fans. Good I'm one there. We just have to quickly here. look at uh, the fact that, uh, well, the video of that particular event where they hosted the Golden Eagle. Let, let's have a feel of what happened between uh, Golden Eagle, the federal government, and also the Minister of Youth and Sport Development Sunday Diary. <laughs> Yes, he was also the MVP in the last match and the goalkeeper of the match. I'm very, very happy for my team and for my players, for the support of the fans, for giving me the support to be among the best in the tournament. And I want to thank each of everyone of each of everyone of Nigeria citizen for the support for the game upon for the game in in Ghana. And the idea just come out from the big coach, the main coach that. This is a lifetime opportunity that we need to take each time, each, each time seriously in the pitch. Yeah. On several occasions, I was, the, I was at the Nigerian Football Federation uh, when I was invited by the General Secretary and the, those in charge of the team and the, our man, the Vice President of the the NFF, one of the vice presidents as well, because the president wasn't around, he was attending to a lot of uh, issues. Uh, I complained to them and they took it up upon themselves to ensure that no matter what the situation is, no matter the short period that we had, that they will do the necessary things to ensure that we got this thing going and at the end of the day, here we are today achieving this. They've done so well with this very little period. Uh, but the thing is that they promised me again, even while I was over there, when we got to the finals, they said if they can see this, the GS said, then automatically that if we had enough time for this, that most probably we will do a lot, a lot better. So our aims and objective at the beginning was to achieve these short-term goals by ensuring that we give to these young guys those information that is necessary, scientifically that is necessary to control the game and control the outcome as well. Uh, you can see in some of the matches, the countries that came against us controlled the game, but we controlled the outcome. So these are the information. I, I believe much in process than just achieving results without process. So the issue here is that we've done so well, and going forward, we should do a lot better. Yeah. When your coach Ubade grabbed the mic, I noticed the vitality, the strength, the coherence of his remarks. And I translated that to the evidence of what we have seen the team he has coached performed and by winning the trophy. So let me once again congratulate our dear Golden Eaglets for doing the nation proud in Cape Coast, Ghana, winning the Wafu B on the 17 tournament is praiseworthy on its own. 
but also you did it so convincingly in Ghana. And that makes it more soul lifting and very heartwarming. <laughs> On behalf of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who lost football dearly, and on behalf of the Nigerian people, especially the football-loving and fanatical fans, I want to specially commend the Golden Eclair players as a team and individually. But I want to specially thank the coaching crew, led by one of our living football legends, Induka Ogbade. And of course, I want to thank the Nigerian Football Federation for the hard work and the sacrifices they put in in making this success a reality. A good one there, hosting the Golden Eagles of Nigeria for what they did. It was a good one for them as they were able to triumph in West Africa. Hopefully, they will transfer that to the uh, African level. Now, Taufik, looking at uh, what the Golden Eagles did uh, in Ghana, a lot of people never really believed that they would be able to win that cup. Although we know we always uh, perform very well when it comes to underage, but looking at the time they had together to go for, to Ghana, uh, it was a very short time. But despite that, they were still able to at least achieve something good. Uh, like you said, you know, we were a force to reckon with at that uh, level of football, and um, that's what we have proved again that mm -hmm. even the time may be short, the boys are always together, and the coaches, the coaches too, you know, they understand the boys. And I'm not surprised that um, they came out victorious because, mm -hmm. like what the minister said now, Ugade is a living legend. He won the cup in 1985 as an under-17, you remember? He was the captain mm. of that team. So bringing him back to that team, he knows everything about that team. He, he, he is the first black man to hold a FIFA World Cup trophy in 1985, like I said. Then he has worked with the under-17 setup for quite a number of years. For like, you know, He worked under uh, this former coach, I've forgotten his name now. He was the assistant when they won the World Cup. Now he's in charge, and I was there at the stadium yesterday and was saying that every pressure is on him now to perform. And I'm very sure with what he said yesterday that the government should give them all the necessary support. That what they need now is early campaign and early support. And I'm so sure the government will do that. They want them to replicate what their predecessors have done in the past. If you remember, like I said, they won this competition in 1985, 2007, 2013. 2015. If they do it again, it, I don't think there's any crime in that. So mm. let's see what they will do. But I'm thinking that the federal government under, I mean, who were, who were, Sunday Dari is in charge of sport. And I think with what has happened recently, you know, in the in, last month too, the under 22, under 20 flying eagles were hosted too. So I think they want this trend to continue. You know, when you, when, when you are successful, everybody wants to come to you. But when you are not successful, you are like an orphan. So I think the federal government want, will want to maintain this tempo mm. and want to give the, 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 the team all the necessary support. They want to give them the necessary support. When you look at the Africa, we've only won it twice, the African Championship. So it means uh, uh, Ubadi really have a lot to do because he must win this. Yes, That's yes. all the point. Because we won the World, uh, World Cup five times, five the under-17. Now, in Africa, twice. And if you can get it for us, it's all time. That would be nice. That would be nice. Exactly what I'm saying. So mm. going to Algeria next year, they, they, they need to you know, do a lot of things. For the players, the players need to blend. If, but I, I, will, I will advise him to, to keep the uh, majority of these players. And if there is anyone that will join them, let's see what will happen. Let's see what will happen concerning the African Championship under 17. Ubadi has done one now. He's remaining two. Let's see if he can win the African also go to get the World Cup. Now let's go basketball now as we talk about the basketball world. Right now, FIBA African qualifiers will be coming up. Nigeria will be facing the likes of Cape Verde, Mali, and also Uganda. But 
to let you know that MBB have named 12, 12 D Tigers players uh, right now being named for these particular qualifiers where we'll be fighting out against all these uh, countries over there in Kigali, Rwanda. Let's look at those 12 players that was rolled out by the uh, MBBF. Now we have Ikena Unduba, who plays for Greensboro, Swam, NBA G League, Uchena Ruegu, a free agent, Michael Okiki, who plays for Gombe Bulls, that's in Nigeria, Ben Emelogu, Royal Metropolitan of France, Michael Oriahi, who plays for Rivers Hoopers, Nigeria also, Michael Binije, Santa Cruz Warriors, NBA G League, and you have Ibe Agu, Customs Abuja, Chimeze Metu, Sacramento Kings, over there in USA, you have Victor Coco, who actually play for uh, Rivers Hoopers, and you also don't forget to Kristen Mikolu, and who also play for Casa Demont, Zaragoza, of Spain, TK Edogi, Colin, he plays in Czech Republic. Well, good one for the fact that uh, they've been able to call these players to participate in this competition. The likes of Emmanuel Omogo, who plays in Israel, H Israel, uh, he played for that particular club in Israel. Those are the 12 players, and uh, now we're waiting to see what they'll be able to offer because uh, now that basketball is back internationally, and this is the result, at least now, if that particular decision was not rescinded by federal government, there's no way we'll have these players. Mm -hmm. And now we are happy that they included home base from Gumbe Bulls, Rivers, Supers, and like. So we love the fact that the, the coaching crew or the MBBA, the people that actually selected these players, deem it fit to add home base players. Mm, I think it's good uh, coming uh, from the fact that we are no, back in international basketball, I think it's good for the for 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 the development of the game in Nigeria. And um, I want them to, like I said when I was talking about the Golden Eagle, to so all what these people needed is government support or two private sector supports too. Because we we have been saying that government cannot do sports alone. Let private individuals too come team up with the government and give these boys all the necessary support. And don't forget that um, as we are going there, these boys, they need to prove their metal at the world level too. So mm -hmm. let's see what, what will happen when they play against uh, Cape Verde, Mali, and Uganda. Okay, but uh, from the way it is, I'm sure the boys will be very happy that, yes, we are back. Uh, does painful because I don't think uh, it will be possible for the ladies to make the World Cup for, for what has happened so far. Mm. Very, very painful in a situation. But for, for the Tigers, at least it's a fox time after that particular okay. shocking uh, decision. Mm -hmm. But now that they are back, let's hear what, as we have said, Mali, Uganda, Uganda and Cape okay, Verde. Right, yeah. uh, looking at basketball, we are number one in Africa. Yes, although that one doesn't mean we should be complacent. Exactly. We believe that our boys will be at least fired up to go against this team because they want to prove a point that, oh, the fact that you have brought us back is an opportunity for, to showcase ourselves. And I also love the fact that the, the home base players that have been given the chance to go out there to join the foreign base players they should be able to at least prove that it wasn't a fluke. They know what they are doing by picking them. And right. then let's see what they will do by qualifying from the first stage and then the second stage, finally making it to the FIBA African uh, Championship. Good one out there, talking about basketball, the Duncan Slam sport has been facing a lot of issues lately, but now it has been resolved and we are back to the mainframe international basketball. Let's see what the D Tigers should be doing for Nigeria as they prosecute their games against Mali, Uganda, and also get guard in those uh, qualifiers. Let's talk about fencing. This is a sport that Nigeria, and a lot of Nigerians may not know what is fencing, but really it's a sport that earns us a lot of medals when it comes to Africa, West Africa. We've been very, very uh, important when it comes to this particular sport here in Africa. But right now, we'll be going to the Commonwealth Games and the Federation, that is Nigerian Fencing Federation, they've invited 14 uh, fencers to actually prepare ahead. They'll be camping for one week ahead of the Commonwealth Games in London. That's the University of East London, where the venue of that competition will be coming up. They will be participating in the junior, junior, senior, not forgetting the veteran and also the cadet. Well, the good thing is that the fencers, that's Nigerian fencers, are ready to participate in this competition. Adekule Samuel, president of that particular federation, says they are about to ready to make sure all the uh, weapons that will be used, talking about saber, EP, and also foil, they are ready to make sure they are able to perform in those uh, uh, swords that will be used. Good one there. Now, looking at the fact that, yes, uh, fencing, if people will be like, fencing, are we really good in this sport? But since 1974, 
that that particular sport has been instituted into Commonwealth Games, Nigerians have been trying their best to make sure they perform best, uh, better rather, in that sport? Uh, based on experience, we have been you know, going to that uh, Commonwealth Games since 1974, which is roughly 50 years now. And um, based on experience, I see us doing well mm -hmm. at, at the Commonwealth. And uh, you know, fencing is a self-defense uh, sport, so they should be able to know what it entails and bring glory to Nigeria. Now, when it comes to uh, sport in Nigeria, we are so attached to football, yes, and then basketball, then probably, that, no, not even probably, athletics, those three stands out, then you begin to look at handball, uh, volleyball, yeah, and all that. But a lot of people don't know that sports like fencing, gymnastics, fetch a lot of medals because they have so many categories yeah, right. where you compete. Well, and all those team, uh, team, sport. team sport. Team sport, you can only win one medal yes. or yeah. maybe trophy or there. But, but for all these individual sport, a lot of uh, medals that you can easily gather for your country. In fact, you can even make more when you compete in gymnastics because they have so many and also fencing, athletics inclusive, individual, individual sport. And now we are happy that, okay, when you look at this sport called fencing, you'll be like, ah, so Nigerians actually participate in this sport that look very foreign. Really, we participate and we are happy that, yes, we have 14 player fencers that will be going to Commonwealth Games, eight of them are male and have six female. Congrats to the uh, picked fencers and we hope that they will be able to do well over there in East London, where they will be camping and also uh, be uh, fighting for that particular sport. Now, a lot of uh, transfer stories here and there. When it comes to football, a lot of people are looking at what would their club, be, who would they be buying? And now, let's look at this particular one coming from Manchester United. Manchester United are closer to Frankie De Jong agreement with Barcelona. It has been a forward and back uh, issue concerning this young lad, and now. It seems uh, Eric Ten Hag is really edging close and close, now closer to signing him. Uh, you know, Eric Ten Hag and uh, De Jong, they were together at Ajax. And uh, if you remember, like two seasons ago, they were in the semi-final of the Champions League and they did fantastic well. So I'm not surprised that uh, there's going to be a reunion between the player and the coach. So he knows the quality, he understands his quality. That's why I want to bring him to Old Trafford. And with what happened at Old Trafford uh, last, uh, this uh, just concluded season, see where they, where they finished. They didn't finish. They finished sixth mm. or so. So they want to move up the ladder. And you know, when it comes to football, my, Manchester United is, is a global club, a global name in world football. So they want to return to where they truly belong. And I'm not surprised that. Is all the young open floodgate of other players that, 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 that they are going to sign, and let, let's see what happens from there. Hmm. And they want to challenge for trophies. You know, they, they, this just concluded season, they, they, they went home empty and dead. They want to win something at least to, to make statement that they are back. They want to make statement that they are back. Let's see what Manchester United will be doing concerning Gijon. They're really getting closer and getting that uh, former uh, Ajax player. Now, while Arsenal are hoping and believing that they will get Rafinha, Chelsea, they've get crushed that particular bid right now with 60 million pounds that they've offered for the lead United winger. From the way it is now, Chelsea seems to be the, they were having the, <laughs> actually having the nod to get him signed because of the way it is right now, offering 60 million pounds. While Arsenal were still dragging feet with 30 million that was rejected, they came back with an offer. But with the offer that Chelsea uh, actually put on the table, 60 million for Leeds United winger, Rafinha seems to be made to go to the blue side. No, I'm not surprised that uh, they after Rafinha because if you look at the just concluded uh, season, all the Brazilian players they did well. See Richard Lisson, see Rafinha, see the, the other guy, I can't really pick the, the name now. They, they are doing very well and you know Chelsea, they, 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 were the, the, uh, they lost out in the, in the, in the run to, to, the MP, I mean, to the EPL and they want to fortify their team. And you must agree, you, you will agree with me that what happened to them during the Abramovich era, you know, really affected the club. I don't want to go back to, to where, they, where they truly belong. So they want to get the best for that club. Don't forget that uh, most of their defenders have left. Um, uh, this guy that left for... for Rudiger left. Rudiger left. Um, the other guy left. Christensen too. left. Christensen left. So they want to fortify the team and, you know, compete 
among the, the top clubs, you know, they, anytime you, you talk about uh, EPL, Chelsea is also, it's all, it's always a force to reckon with. In fact, one of the biggest one forces of the biggest, to be reckoned with. In the last 10, 12 years, Chelsea have won one trophy or the other. Go and check the records. Mm. A lot so, of records. Uh, records, they've won everything in football from Abramovich era and they want to continue under this new owner. The fact that the new man, Todd Bowley, has been able, his, his consortium has been able to turn things around now. They are actually pursuing a lot of players and seems uh, Raheem Sterling could be coming. Now they've, they've, uh, so they are actually edging close to getting Rafinha, uh, get crashing Arsenal's bid for him and a lot of other players that we heard about screening and all of that. But that shows that if Chelsea can get all these players, well, And the see. fact that they are even in the Champions League, every top player wants to come to that club. And the fact that uh, they want to compete for the EPL again. Yeah. Again, it will be a lot of uh, how many horses race, horse race now exactly. where people have been looking at maybe Manchester City or Liverpool but if Chelsea are able to get all these players that they are running after that will be a big one there now let's look at another one we have Manchester United agrees uh, 13 million pounds deal for Feyenoord uh, Feyenoord left back is a defender Tyrell Malaysia Malaysia has been a player they wanted to buy for a while they've been pursuing him while Lyon actually agree with him, but right now, Manchester United seems to be having an edge, 13 million pounds deal. They agree to him personally, and everything is being sorted out. Before you know it, announcement could be made. Uh, but man, you, they have uh, Alex Telles, and they have Luke Shaw, so I'm surprised that they still want to bring uh, a left back. A left back again. Maybe one of those two guys will, will have to make way for Malaysia, so that we have to make way for Malaysia to come in. So I'm thinking that they will send the Alex Telex away so that they will be able to accommodate uh, the, the new guy. Okay, hopefully everything goes well with Manchester United lately. Their transfer have not been going well the way they plan. And lastly, on the law, we have to look at Manchester City. And it has asked them they've agreed a deal for England on the 19th. Sam, a dossier to Bayern Leverkusen for £10 million. Pounds. That name, you know, is Nigerian, but well, he's playing on the 19th for England right now. A dossier will be joining Bayern Leverkusen from Manchester City for £10 million. Pounds. Mm, Bayern, Bayern Leverkusen is a big club in Germany and I'm not surprised that the, the, the boy is going there. They must have their reason maybe to allow him f to get more playing time and develop, then they'll bring him back to the club. Uh, okay, but what if, uh, you know, at times, most, most of the time we see uh, most English players, I call it English now because he's playing for the under-19, and uh, when they go abroad, their performance is not as... Uh, huge as they actually hype them. We all know that. But well, for except for maybe the likes of uh, Bellingham, who has been outstanding Bellingham, for Borussia Dortmund, Jalon Sancho did the same Sancho, thing. But when yeah. he moved to Man U, he didn't work out. Mm -hmm. So for uh, a dossier, let's wait and see if really Bayern Leverkusen can actually favor him as he moves to join them in the 10 million pound move. Maybe he can follow in the footstep of um, Sancho and Bellingham and let's see what will happen. Let's see what will happen concerning that. Coming from Tafik Lawa, who has been a guest on the show 360 Sport on Trust TV. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Um, Good one out there. At, at least uh, it's been a wonderful time giving you some sporting juicy stories here, here on 360 Sport. I am Adeni Aji Shafe. Thanks for watching.